Hi guys, in today's video, I want to talk all about skincare, all about sunscreen. So, if you wanna know more about sunscreen, who should use it, what kind you should use, what to look out for, the best kind for your skin type, and all that jazz, please keep watching. So I figured now would be a great time to talk all about sunscreen because it is now the end of June and we're nearing summer. And sunscreen is not only something that you should be using in the summertime, but specifically year round, uh, although I I know a lot of people including myself only think about it when we're out in the sun but the reality is that one in five Americans will get skin cancer and we are affected by the sun even when we're inside we're affected through the glass we're affected by rays of light through light in our home so no matter what you're doing as soon as you wake up you need some type of sunscreen I know it's something that even myself I don't use regularly I'm trying to get in the habit of it but let's face it most sunscreens tend to not feel so great on our face and I don't like anything heavy so I kind of just wanted to share with you guys all the research that I have done on sunscreen and I have a lot of information so I'm going to try to give it to you guys in a simplified concise organized way so that it's not too difficult for you guys I will also leave some links down below in case you want to do a little extra reading so yeah okay so the benefits of sunscreen are that it helps protect against getting burned by the sun it helps protect against uh, aging and it also helps protect against skin cancer and those are three things that we all need to be cognizant of no matter what our skin type our skin tone it's commonly misunderstood that African Americans don't need sunscreen now it does take a little more for us to burn just because of the melanin in our skin but we absolutely do need sunscreen uh, no matter what skin tone you are you could really benefit from a sunscreen I know that not everybody will wear one because I don't myself but it is good practice to use one. It's also especially important to use sunscreen if you burn easily if you take certain prescription medications although on the back of the label it should tell you if you are in danger of burning more easily or anything like that and also if you're using vitamin C or retinol anything that's going to help lighten and brighten your skin or increase the turnover of your cells anything like that sun can really damage your skin so it's kind of like basically if you're using any skincare overall you really should be protecting your skin because anytime you go out into the sun you do run the risk of damaging your skin so why spend upwards of a thousand dollars on skincare either treatments or products when you're not going to be protecting yourself from the sun i think sunscreen is the one product no matter who we are what we use what age we are it's the one thing that we can use to really help protect our skin and keep us from aging and getting sunspots or hyperpigmentation or anything like that. Sunscreen is also one category of product that I don't think you necessarily have to spend a lot of money on. I know I have a video which I'll post down below where I talk about different either makeup or skincare items and whether or not I think you need to splurge or save your money. For me I have found really nice sunscreens at the drugstore and I've also found really nice sunscreens at Sephora. So I think it just depends on what you're looking for but you really can find nice sunscreens at the drugstore or at Ulta any place like that so um, let's actually talk about SPF in terms of numbers I know when you are looking at sunscreen it can kind of be overwhelming because you have UVA UVB you have your SPF number you have like an index you have your plus plus like it can be a little overwhelming and that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video now it's recommended that you use a sunscreen with an SPF of at least 30 so this means anything from 30 on up is going to be beneficial for you with an SPF of 30 it's blocking 90% of the Sun's harmful rays now what that means is if you want to use like an SPF of 80 it's going to increase the protection of how many rays can actually damage your skin, but no SPF is going to block 100% of the rays. So if you wanna use an SPF of 100, it's still not going to be a perfect sunscreen in terms of um, like 
shielding your skin and protecting your skin. So I usually tend to use about an SPF of about 80. I do find that the higher SPF I myself use, the less likely my skin is to tan. Now there are some instances where I do like to tan, but for the most part, I don't really like my face to be dark. I tend to just like to bronze it up with makeup. Um, but I do like my body to be tan, but an SPF of 30 is really all you need. Like I said, no SPF provides 100% protection against the rays of the sun. Also, the higher SPF number does not mean the longer it lasts. It is recommended that you apply sunscreen, well reapply sunscreen every two hours or after uh, getting out of the water, swimming or sweating, what have you. So just because you're using an SPF of 80, it doesn't mean you can go longer without reapplying. So let's talk a little bit about UVA and UVB. UVA is going to provide protection against aging. So when you think of UVA, think of aging. This is going to help protect against wrinkles, sunspots, aging spots, anything like that. And UVB is going to help you protect against burning. So UVB, burning. So what you really want is a combination of the two, UVA and UVB, because you don't really want to age externally but burn. So it's best to use a UVA slash UVB. Sometimes they kind of just put on the bottle UV, but you kind of have to read to make sure it is UVA and UVB because that's what's recommended. Okay, so there are two basic types of sunscreens. You have chemical and physical. I know it kind of gets confusing when thinking about them, but basically your chemical sunscreen is going to contain organic compounds. It works by changing the UV rays into heat and deflecting it off of your skin. Uh, usually with chemical sunscreen, you're gonna find a thinner formula. You're not gonna have a white cast left on your face, but because it's turning the UV rays into heat, it can be bad for those who suffer from pigmentation issues or if you already have sunspots. Heat can be known to cause the darker pigmentation of your skin or the turning of your skin. So it's not recommended for anyone who already has those issues or if you have sensitive skin. Now when applying a chemical sunscreen, you do have to wait a little while into going until going out in the sun. And you don't have to do that with a physical sunscreen. So let's talk about physical sunscreens. The number one way you can tell between chemical and a physical sunscreen is going to be the product zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is going to be what gives you that white appearance in a physical sunscreen. So physical sunscreen works by sitting on your face and kind of providing a barrier between the sun rays from entering your skin um, and being absorbed. So they're basically just physical blockers. So when you think of a physical sunscreen, think of zinc oxide and think about the sunscreen physically sitting on your skin to prevent the rays of the sun from penetrating into your skin. So physical sunscreens are good for those who are irritated easily if you have sensitive skin, if you have oily skin, if you're acne prone, but they are thick and they do rub off easily, but you can apply them directly before going into the sun since they just physically sit onto your skin. So for me, I have oily acne prone skin. A physical sunscreen would be best. Now they do have sunscreens that are less likely to turn you gray, especially if you do have a darker skin tone. So it kind of just depends on trial and error to see what is going to work best for you. So now I want to give you some of my favorite sunscreens or some that I know were favorites of my clients when I was working at Sephora. I do have a list. So as far as chemical sunscreen, remember this is going to be something that does not contain zinc oxide. You have your Lancome BNFE SPF of 50. I'm going to insert a picture here. You also have Shiseido Sun Protection Spray with an SPF of 50. You have your Murad Invisibler SPF 30. Now that's actually a really good primer as well. So I kind of wanted to give you guys some options versus a sunscreen that's a liquid or a cream, a spray, and then you have one that's more of a primer. So if you're looking for something that's more of like an everyday product you can use that doesn't leave a white cast, I know for sure. It's the Murad Invisibler and you can use that as a primer as well. And then the last one, which is a drugstore brand, would be the Neutrogena Clear Face SPF 55. So those are all really great products. I do want to say that the one brand of sunscreen that I really, really love overall is going to be Shiseido. They have really nice skincare overall, but nice sunscreens as well. And I think the reason 
reason is because Asian skincare is often cited for being all about brightening and lightening your skin because in those cultures, having lighter skin is better. So a lot of time you're gonna find that they have really nice sunscreens, anything to help protect them from the sun. If you do happen to visit Asian cultures or see people visiting in America, you'll often find that they use umbrellas to shield their self from the sun. Sometimes it's because they just don't want to get dark, but it's also because they really want to help protect their skin. So I'll just throw that out there. Now let's talk about physical sunscreens. These are going to be anything that contain zinc oxide. Once again, they're going to sit on your skin and physically act as a barrier. So the first one is the Shiseido Urban Environment SPF 42. That's a really nice lightweight formula. The second one is the Alginus Sublime Defense SPF 50. That is also a really nice lightweight texture and then the last one which I love is the Neutrogena Sensitive Skin SPF 50 which is going to make sure that you don't break out uh, or anything like that but it's meant for sensitive skin and it is friendly to your pockets so that's important um, all the other ones are usually at about $30 and up so it can be expensive so that's why I kind of like choosing Neutrogena I use Neutrogena sunscreen myself because I find that they're about around $10 so I don't feel that guilty about buying a product like that I do have some overall tips for application it is recommended that you use one ounce of sunscreen for your whole body now one ounce is about <laughs> the size of a shot glass um, so that provides full protection and you really only need to put sunscreen on areas of your skin that are exposed now depending on what type of clothing you're wearing your clothing might have SPF protection if it's like athletic wear or anything like that but the rays can also penetrate under your clothes but I'm not even going to say that I would put it everywhere I would mainly just put it anywhere where my skin is exposed to the Sun because more than likely Likely I'm not going to just be like outside for a long amount of time but if I am going to be in the Sun almost likely have on a bathing suit and I will put it everywhere including under my bathing suit it's a good idea to just generally apply sunscreen no matter if it's chemical or physical 15 minutes before going out into the Sun although you can apply physical sunscreen right before going out it's kind of just nice to give it a little time to set in. It also helps to cut down on that greasy feeling that you can sometimes get from a lot of sunscreens. Uh, I like combating that with using a spray sunscreen and you can find those from lots of different brands and they don't tend to leave a white cast. I would really only use a spray sunscreen for my body though because it's just easier to apply since sunscreens can be really thick. And my last tip is to once again apply it every two hours or after sweating or coming out of the pool or the ocean or anything like that. This is one thing that I kind of have a problem with when it comes to sunscreen. When you wear makeup, who is really going to be reapplying sunscreen under your makeup? Now they do have a couple of setting sprays that kind of have SPF in them, but they do leave your face feeling oily even though they say they're matte. I will link one down below. It's sold at Sephora by the brand. Uh, super goop but for me I think that's one of the things that keeps me from applying a sunscreen day to day under my makeup when I'm not going to be out in the Sun for prolonged periods of time it's that you know if I can't reapply it is it really effective but the answer is yes it's always better to protect your skin a little bit than none at all I will say though that when I go out in the summertime um, just you know for fun activities I do tend to wear sunscreen on my skin like I say I tend to wear one that is in a spray bottle so I can reapply it if I want I can keep it in the car it also helps to keep you feeling nice and cool so yeah those are all of my tips about sunscreen I hope this was simple to follow I've been talking for almost 18 minutes but I hope you guys got some useful information I will leave all the links I have down below and I will see you guys in the next video bye